Mike Staley Podcast. Episode 489. It's Sunday, March 24th, 2013, 1 p.m. Pacific Time, Internet Talk Radio for your imagination. Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. Today we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster. Plus, we bring you the segment News Random, where we hear of a town that is banning something most of us use all the time. Mike's Daily Podcast. And Republican strategist Carl Rowe said something today that'll make a lot of Republicans go out of their minds. Mike's Daily Podcast. He said, I could see a Republican candidate for president in 2016 endorsing same-sex marriage. That's not what most Republican politicians say and Republicans of old age. But over the past couple of months, it's like a floodgate has opened on this issue. Meanwhile, actress Tilda Swinton is doing a performance piece in an art museum. And remember this, you can see it at the New York City Modern Art Museum. Mike's Mike's Daily Podcast. It's called The Maybe, and she sleeps in a glass box. She first did the piece back in 1995 in London. uh, Mike's. And she recently played Daily David Bowie's wife podcast in the music video for yeah. his song The Stars Are Out Tonight. But if you want to go see it, it's always unannounced, so you don't know when she's going to be there, and they have it at different places in the museum. Oh, look, I just walked in. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? And it's a disgruntled fiddle player tell you what. What? I heard that a guy that I used to work with has become the president of an organization where he makes over three million dollars a year oh my gosh wow how does it make you feel it makes me feel like i maybe should have killed him when he was younger that's not right disgruntled fiddle player you're right i need to make the time machine so i can go back in time and kill him then i can get a job you can't make a time machine. Not with that negative attitude. I get Benita talking out of it. Okay, this ground fiddle player, don't do it. Okay. Wow, that was pretty quick. Look who else just walked in. Hello out there, Mike. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Brewmaster, did you hear the thing about Tilda Swinton and doing a performance piece where she's just sleeping on a bed? That's a pretty interesting. That is interesting. How does she do that? Just sitting there sleeping while people are looking. Brewmaster? Brewmaster, wake up. Well, uh, uh. You were sleeping while I was talking to you. No, I was doing a performance piece. Okay. Well, if you can tell us what you think of Tilda Swinton's interesting career move or what you think of Karl Rove trying so hard to get the Republicans to go in the direction that the Democrats have been going in because maybe they'll get some more votes in 2016. Mike, it's all about 2016 and getting the votes. We'll do anything. We've proved it. We even made a cult follower a presidential candidate just because he seemed to be the one that could win the office of president. And we'll do it again in 2016. Heck, I'll marry some fella. Brewmaster, want to get married? No, thanks. I won't get tied down to any one person. Plus, I don't like men. Mike, you can say that Republicans have their eyes on the prize. Well, it'll be interesting to see if people actually follow Karl Rove's ideas. He's already ticked off a lot of Tea Partiers by saying that, hey, there's a lot of extremist candidates that aren't ever going to be elected, so we shouldn't put any money into them. And then by saying that, a lot of these fringe groups have popped up and have raised money for these extreme candidates of which he is speaking. I love extreme candidates. I'll vote for them. See, now that's why the Republican Party is having all this trouble right now. There's all these extremes inside. Yeah, what about the Democrats with the Occupy movement? Well, a lot of them had to go home and get their sleeping bags washed. And that's why you should never buy a used sleeping bag. You can never get everything out of it that you want to. Yeah, washing just don't work in that situation. Point taken. Well, you can email us your comments at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Mike, I have decided to just accept that my friend, who now makes all that money per year, is still my friend somewhere deep down. 
and I do not envy him or wish upon him death. That's good. But I'm still working on the time machine. Come on, Benita. Bye, y'all. Bye. He's nuts. Also, check out our website, mikesdailypodcast.com. That is where you can find a link to where to listen to the show in iTunes and subscribe to the show in iTunes and rate it and comment on it there. More people find out about us and we don't wallow in obscurity. We also have links to where to find us in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Yelp. You can also Yelp about us all at mikesdailypodcast.com. And we also have the blog there as well as the daily podcast picture. News random. So you may try to drink a lot of water because people say you have to stay hydrated. Your body needs like 800 gallons of water a day or something to that effect. No, probably not that much water. You could die drinking that much water. But you you need a lot of water every day. Now, my mom doesn't drink any water. I don't know how she's living in her 70s. She's not drinking any water. She does drink liquids, but she just doesn't like water. That's I think a lot of people in that generation don't like water for some reason. Water. Never touch the stuff, as they used to say. But, no, you do need water, but you don't need plastic bottles. To wit, here is a story from the magazine Positive News Us. Dot org. It says, Concord, Massachusetts has become one of the first communities in the U.S. to ban the sales of single-serving plastic water bottles. Not because it's bad for you, but it's bad for the planet. The plastic bottle ban resulted from a three-year campaign by local activists who pushed to reduce waste and fossil fuel use. Octogenarian Jean Hill led the charge. She said, quote, the bottled water companies are draining our aquifers and selling it back to us. The campaign ban the bottle claims that it takes 17 million barrels of oil per year to make all the plastic water bottles used in the U.S. alone. That's enough oil to fuel 1.3 million cars for a year. So the town of Concord's website described the bylaws stating, quote, it shall be unlawful to sell non-sparkling, unflavored drinking water in single-serving polythylene terephthalate or PET bottles of one liter, 34 ounces or less, in the town of Concord on or after January 1st of this year. The first offense results in a warning. The second is a $25 fine, and the third and each following offense is a $50 fine. Drinking that bottled water could cost you $50. And who makes the money? Well, the town of Concord. And I guess the companies that make the plastic. So is that another part of Mayor Bloomberg's plan was in order to stop all the selling of sugary drinks that also that would cause the less plastic bottles to be made? Was that an added benefit to his plan? No, but, you know, I don't use plastic water bottles ever. I always drink out of a plastic tumbler, which I reuse over and over again. It's okay to wash these in the upper rack of the dishwasher. And I have one right here. You can hear the, the I like ice in my drink. You can hear the ice tinkling, my little drinky poo. And I drink through the little straw, and it's so healthy and, and cool. I like my chilled water. Now, when my German second cousin, Anne Katrine, was visiting, she marveled at how much ice I use. Because in Europe, they don't use ice much. Or in Germany, they don't. In fact, when I was in Germany in 2009, I was trying to find ice anywhere I went, and everybody looked at me like, what? Oh, yeah, you're American. Because we like our ice. And I like my ice in my drink. It makes a nice sound. But I guess that's how I was raised. But no plastic bottles here. No PET. Uh, you may try to wean yourself off of the plastic bottles. When I was uh, in San Francisco, I see, however, we have a long way to go. Even in that progressive city, at the, uh, what was that? The St. Patrick's Day. Big St. Patrick's Day party near the downtown court building civic center uh they had a booth that was giving away free bottled water to people and there was so many bottles of water everywhere yes they were trying to keep people hydrated because it was a rather warm day 
in the middle of March, as it tends to be in California. But it was also a waste of a lot of plastic, and possibly the people of Concord, Massachusetts would be quite upset. Perhaps someday there will be a water bottle ban in the city, possibly before they mow down all the eucalyptus trees, as was mentioned in a previous news random. It will definitely happen after shopping bags have been banned because that has, in fact, happened. In fact, here in Podcastro Valley, you can no longer get a a plastic shopping bag. You have to pay for a paper shopping bag if you've forgotten your uh, take-along reusable bags. I always keep one in my car. I actually always keep a bunch in my car. Heck, if you're without a reusable shopping bag, I'll let you borrow one. And I don't worry about this whole people. There was, Oh, I am so going to write this one local throwaway paper here in the East Bay. There was a huge article in one of the papers about how they did a study. And it turns out that reusable shopping bags are highly toxic and are going to cause you to get sick. Because when you purchase chicken and you put it in the bag and the juices get out, the bacteria has become very dangerous Especially if you throw the bag back in your car and it's hot and the you know, bacteria, etc. Duh, we all know that. But the fact of the matter is they still sell, actually they still just give away, not sell, uh, plastic bags, those little plastic bags that you can stick the chicken in. They have that in the meat section and the produce section. You know those plastic bags. Grab those, put your chicken in that, and the juices won't leak out. If, you, if you're careful, you won't have to deal with that. And what's the big deal about washing, you, you know, just while you're washing dishes in, in the sink, just wash it out. But be smart. Use those plastic bags. And yes, okay, you might say, but those other plastic bags they give away in the grocery store are also plastic and also going to clog up the landfills. No, those can be reused. To pick up dog poo, oh yeah, okay, well, maybe that does go back into the landfills, but at least they're being reused. Hey, it's not perfect, but the fact of the matter is we need to do something. We have to move in an order, in a a direction that is a little less wasteful. That's the whole point of all all of this, really, deep down. I'm going to write that paper and give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to explain my logic just like that. Except for the part where I doubled back on myself and collapsed through a wormhole in space. That was bad. But we go outside of the last place on Earth and escape wormholes here at the last place on Earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. And here's today's podcast picture. The picture is from Georgia. I believe it's Marietta, Georgia, where I do not think they have a shopping bag ban or a plastic water bottle ban yet. But that's coming. As well as same-sex marriage. It's only a matter of time. The floodgates are open. Put on your raincoat. A lot of people don't like to put on their raincoats. But that's the world today. The picture is of a theater that was using some interesting alliteration with the letter M. You can see it there, mikesdailypodcast.com. And I mentioned how I like alliteration. And when I saw it on this movie theater, this old movie theater was kind of cool. Not tremendously cool, but kind of. And I thought I would show that to you in today's podcast picture. MikeStillyPodcast.com. Mike, I like plastic water bottles because it doesn't hurt my husband when I break them over his head. You hit bottles over the head of the disgruntled fiddle player? Yeah, when he gets me all mad and such. Yeah, she does it from time to time. Also to wake me up. Ow. Well, I was already up, and that wasn't a plastic water bottle. No, I was listening to Mike's story, and I want to save the planet. Wake up! I am up. Dang it. Mike, I make my eighth beer out of brick bottles. Oh, boy. Brick bottles? Huh. Okay, well, that's not using plastic and oils and such. You're using the minerals and rocks and such to make your bottles. I don't see where people would have any complaints with that. And, you know, the square bottles are making a comeback, as we mentioned in a former podcast about Pepsi doing new bottles, making them square. Yeah, Mike, it's my root beer brick bottle. Oh, boy. Wow, that's interesting looking. Let me try and drink that pour it out. Wow, it pours out nicely. It's wonderful. Wait, what's that floating in the root? 